I remember, in fact, after we did uh, Being Cyrus, I remember Baman's uh, wife, Zenobia, uh, requesting me very earnestly not to please don't uh, give Baman another role in one of your movies and all. It's I said, a negative so I said, character. Why? Yeah, he's a bit of a yeah, yeah, yeah. rough around yeah, the edges yeah. kind of. Yeah. Uh, and I said, why? She said, because for the last month after the film release, a, yeah. some old, one old neighbor was putting a letter under his door in protest for him playing uh, the character he plays. Also, he's playing a Parsi, na? Yeah. So, you're spoiling the name sort of thing. Otherwise, very he's playing upset. some North Indian guy. No, no, that's fine. About. They don't yeah. care. <laughs> exactly. You know, communal the world. Next thing, I was looking for a person who could actually shove their head underground with their body sticking out for hours. And <laughs> I assumed it would all be at... The Kumela or in Allahabad and in these what places. Or the Bombay Times party after a few. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, I actually deployed two pe people there who used to uh, provide us with junior artists in Rishikesh, in Allahabad and in one more place. And I literally thought there'd be a line of fakirs. Talented fakirs. 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 Uh, so I had asked them to send me some money at that time during uh, through uh, Western Union money transfer. <laughs> so this money came in, uh, and I sent I think a very small percentage so of that money to these people, and I took the rest of the money and I went to Pakistan to play a rugby tournament. Okay. And by the time I came back, I thought there'd be a whole li long list, and these guys called me and they said it's impossible to find this guy. <laughs> All right, almost excited to have Homi Adhajanya here on our show. Uh, Homi, what can I say? This is a friendship, not a friendship, it's a strong word, but yeah. well, we were good friends for a little while. When I was a really young boy, we were in school together. We were. We were in college for some time together. We were. Okay, so we'll start with Murder Mubarak first, just before I forget the name. Um, first, yeah, I just love the fact that one of the boys I grew up with whose Hindi is as bad as mine, as bad, is now one of the top-notch <laughs> Hindi film directors only in India. Yeah. This all goes to Dr. Wag. It does. It does. It does. It but those, maybe your Hindi is Those many backhand slaps I was so going to leave. No, no, no. It'll be a, it'll be a silent one-hour show between Seriously? us. Seriously? Between us? How oh do you God. talk to Pankaj Tripathi? English. Yeah? And then he just nods and what did you say? Okay, Murder Mubarak. What Back a, to Murder Mubarak. Tell us Starcast. Yes. Lots of interesting faces. Tell us about it. What, what, so you, you'll, you will actually really enjoy Murder Mubarak because I think you'll see much more than... Uh, because you've had the privilege of being uh, a Bombay Gymkhana member or a Gymkhana member. So the whole thing is, it's not a great look at the members. It's a pretty caustic look at... Uh, oh, fair enough. The elite <laughs> in, <laughs> yeah. uh, fair enough. in yeah. these colonial clubs, which hangovers, have these yeah, sort yeah, of... Yeah. With their colonial hangovers and their traditions of ringing bells. Yeah, and Really? First you so, take up Hindi. Now you betray your own... own yes, I mean, yes, look yes, at yes. you, bro. <laughs> Ed too. <laughs> really? So, uh, yeah. So it's, it's, it is about that. It's, uh, it's, it's about a murder that ensues in this club. It's been carved out of Anuja Chauhan's... Uh, Oh, right, right. Novel, the famous uh, writer. Club oh. to Death. Yeah. She's not a freedom fighter. Famous writer, oh, you famous old writer. bastard. Oh, sorry. You, you're, you're, sorry. They I, know I, how old I, we I are now. <laughs> this, this interview will take two hours because you can't hear each other. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, freedom fighter would be funny, but no. I got this writer. She's 102. Huh. Sorry. So, it's set in the... Yeah, so it's set in a gymkhana in uh, Delhi. Ah, nice. So, it was interesting because I went back to the gymkhanas here. To actually now suddenly see it from the outside because I also did have the privilege of having grown up in these gymkhanas playing rugby and swimming and all that stuff. So suddenly to see it from the outside and you realize uh, how bizarre it is actually. Especially and then what I did was I did uh, sort of cannibalize little characteristics of various members and put them together to make each character. Wow, I was going to ask you if there's anyone we know. I mean, that's a lot of people. shit, but you but, know. But then you watch the movie, you'll be pointing you them think? all out. You'll yes, be able yes, to? Yeah, all. No? All, all. Wow, and people we know well. Yeah. That's, that's, for me, that's a tribute in a way. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, it basically, it's a whodunit. It happens in Delhi at this very sort of posh little uh, club. But, so you write the thing yourself, right? Don't finish my sentence. I'm so sorry. Carry I apologize. On. I'll put my legs up for two minutes as punishment. Club. Ah, fuck. <laughs> By the way, I'm wearing Manik Unwara's shoes, huh? Oh check, my check God. them out. You remember him? <laughs> you haven't been to the gym for a long time. And now but he's got no shoes. No, no, you know what happened? So he couldn't bear my torn shoes one day. This is seven, eight years ago. He took out his old shoes and says, you wear mine, they're better than yours. So I said, okay. You didn't think I would. 
and you still been with me. Yeah, you are. My wife's left, but the shoes are still here. Yeah. Ah, ah sorry. Yeah, I, you yeah, you were saying. No, you were. No, you were. You said don't finish my sentence. The last thing I remember. Next question. Nice star cast. You've got lovely cast. Yeah, Jake lovely Astro, cast. Uh, Pankaj, we've got uh, Dimple, Sanjay Kapoor. You've uh, resurrected, resurrected rather. Who else? Uh, so there's Sanjay Vijay Kapoor, Varma. there's Dimple Kapadia, there's Sara Ali Khan, Sara Ali Khan Vijay Varma, uh, Pankaj Tripathi, who was absolutely a joy to work with. Yeah. I mean, phenomenal guy. Um, Tiska Chopra. Oh, nice. And even the tertiary characters are very solid. Hey, look, tertiary, what happens? Yeah, oh the God, not only does he not speak Hindi, he doesn't he speaks Latin now. <laughs> the fuck is tertiary? Don't bully us so, so with your uh, South Bombay upbringing. So <laughs> Two of us are also from South Bombay here. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you put subtitles? I think we'll have to. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so all the secondary characters as well are, are, are superb actors. I mean, uh, and uh, to create this whole sort Why of world. Why did you cast any which, members? No. But small roles. I mean, like you know, whatever. It would have been fun. No, but ever since I did start making films, I remember I got, I used to get harangued when I used to go to these clubs for people who said always pulled out that you know in the second standard I did this play in yeah, school and the man is eighty. Rahul Bose, why? <laughs> <laughs> Leave homie alone. <laughs> so uh, I can imagine that's that's horrible. Yeah, no? yeah, yeah. So it's, it's you know, I could have played that me. character. I could have easily yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but it, but it's 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 fun. It's fun. It's it's because it's I had to lift a, an idea of what I had researched in Bombay and then put it in in Delhi. That that subsect of members in Delhi with that little, little over yeah. the top, very flashy. Uh, but are they even more anglophilic than Indian uh, Mumbai? Is it? Well, no. Pipe smoking, no. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Pipe smoking Golf and playing. all that song. But that goes on here as well. No? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, but it's it's very convoluted it, it's it's very convoluted it's it's it is through the lens of looking at this sort of classism within this uh, this the pr- promo that we saw the trailers uh, seems quite funny as well mm. it's all tongue in cheek is it how do you describe it A piece of satire i mean uh, i wouldn't say it's a satire but it definitely is very tongue in cheek it is uh, a lot of uh, the members can get away with saying the most politically incorrect things but they are not saying it to prove a point they actually they're just desensitized to the world around them so yeah. for them it's the club and nothing else exists the rules of the club are more important than uh, oh god anything don't outside tell me. i got a letter from the management for a broken mirror in the gym which accidentally w- 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 chip no. broke chip must have broken that it, one doing his ponytail but no <laughs> <laughs> it was my son mikhail which is the tone it's on it's just a tone it's like a you tone. know like in school yeah yeah okay. uh, just a warning please uh, make sure you don't do this what are you come on i have been through that also yeah i can imagine yeah, yeah really. I, I was yeah. also uh, yeah. asked no, to but you were you did some bad things uh, homie my no, son I was smoking know. on the dumbbell roll and the uh, it hit the mirror i mean these things happen uh, not a good thing but there's no deliberate action and it's, it's more like the tone of the letter that they send you, which is really I can't understand why they can't just it's say, a little "Hey guys, be careful." Yeah, you know, whatever, don't do that. There's something more to it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get back to the writing here. So Anuja wrote the story, and the, but you're known to write your own uh, material. I write my own material. I also uh, do other. I mean, I, I get commissioned uh, other people's material. This, in this case, what it was was uh, Suprotim and Ghazal. Had okay, now you're throwing names to me like they're Pele and uh, Garincha. The they're, famous... they're, they're very well-known uh, scriptwriters. Oh, damn it! So I should have done my research. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> they actually uh, carved out of this pretty uh, dense novel the story for Murder Murder because it just it's just it's almost impossible to sort of make something. Are these all club members themselves? Because you'll probably have to have that background. No, only you. Yes. Yeah. So in a sense, they don't know that world as well as you. No, but uh, that's why also uh, Pankaj Tripathi is the cop, the very unassuming cop who looks more like a math professor. Yeah. Who comes in as the audience's eyes into this world because the world is so alien. And the other guys are all suspects. They're all so members the main, main who character. all have, uh, I mean, uh, good reason to have probably committed a murder. I love who done it. So, they, so they're all till the end. Uh, everybody's in in the thing. Yeah, everyone's in the thing, and then there's that usual freaking trope where a detective like Poirot or someone yeah. comes in every, oh, he's that everyone is sitting around and instead of just saying it was you it is one of you he will go to each person and tell us a whole story about them of why it wasn't them yeah and then finally the poor guy who's left is like okay shit i'm the last one in the row it, it is me mm. so it's it, it has that classical ending okay so we'll save time because uh, you know 21st century 22nd century almost uh, who's the murderer 
uh, is Pankaj Tripathi, and that's the whole twist in it. So th- this releases, by the way, on it's released by the time you see this, and uh, there's uh, Navroz Mubarak at the same time, and uh, oh, is it? Yeah, on the, in the same weekend, Murder Mubarak. You didn't think of that. You could take two mo- Mubarak's and your promo. And burn one. Netflix, give me a job. But they, are, they, I think they're trying to expand it to a wider audience. <laughs> and out of sixty thousand, two parts. You understand? Sixty thousand, thirty thousand hate you. So yeah. there'll be also that. No. <laughs> Killing the market. <laughs> you know, nobody. It's the own tribe which always destroys the person, right? It's always from the inside. I remember, in fact, after we did uh, Being Cyrus, I remember Baman's uh, wife Zenobia uh, requesting me very earnestly not to. Please don't uh, give Baman another role in one of your movies and all. It's I said, a negative so I said, character. Why? Yeah, he's a bit of a yeah, yeah, yeah. rough around yeah, the edges yeah. kind of. Yeah. Uh, and I said, why? She said, because for the last month after the film release, he was getting a, yeah. some old one old la- neighbor was putting a letter under his door in protest for him playing uh, the character he plays. Also, he's playing a Parsi, na? Yeah. So you're spoiling the name sort of thingy. By otherwise, he's playing upset. some North Indian guy. No, no, that's fine. About. They don't yeah. care. <laughs> exactly. You know, communal the world is. Huh. All right, so let's go back home and talk about... Uh, firstly, let me explain. We were in school together, so uh, that's many, many years ago. You were, not, correct me if I'm wrong, very good at art. That's what I remember. You're wrong. No, don't lie. I swear. I mean, Nandish Kalashim was the best painter, but then we found out his mom was doing the paintings. <laughs> yes or no, homie? With a straight face. Yes or no? So <laughs> then then, then you stepped up. public domain <laughs> by any chance. No, but this is a true story. I'm, I'm, not, yeah, I'm not lying. It's all true stories. But, but how do they know who that guy is? Yeah. Uh, I'm just saying these things happen in classes. So we thought he was, but he was actually uh, whatever. His and mom was painting. For yeah, him. you on the other hand was. Uh, it, it happens, but you were. He's, he's left-handed, right? If I remember correctly. Who? You, dude. I mean, am I the wrong person here? All I right. think the is the guest don't outside. Make me, don't make me ask you to masturbate in front of the <laughs> camera. But for God's sake, are you left-handed? <laughs> yeah. So you. No, I'm right. Stop being so modest. So you were a good. Uh, I can't be wrong. I'm not that crazy. I'm man. right-handed. I can't. I, I'm shit at art. Oh. And uh, I speak fluent Hindi. I, I mean, you've got everything okay, wrong. Okay, okay. So he's trying to be do the paradox. But the point is, he was very good the at paradox. art. But I never thought you'd get into films. Neither in I. that sense. Neither. But I remember I. where we were going. Uh, you got into diving before that. Yes. And you were damn good at it. And and that's a proper profession. Yeah. If you can just elaborate, I'm not a springboard diver. No, no, not a springboard. Yeah. What, what do you call a deep sea diver? I'm a, yeah, I'm a scuba diver. Scuba, scuba diver. diving instructor. And you're like the top level guy and all that, right? Well, no, not anymore. But Pralad uh, is number one. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Pralad. <laughs> Pralad. He really pushes it, man. He's fantastic. Yeah, he's, he's, fantastic. A, he's a pioneer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he is due. the pioneer. Give him his due. He is the yeah. he is the guy who actually uh, went to uh, Lakshadweep with two friends. Yeah, uh, one who didn't know how to swim. One who was not to supposed to be there. Yeah, and they literally were on a small little fishing boat, going and hanging one guy on uh, off the edge with a uh, mask on to see if what he could see. Hmm. And they'd stop anywhere and they just dive and they'd mark it. There was no GPS as well. And the next thing, I mean, this guy started a school there where I used to teach and I used to live. And he named it after the two friends who obviously drowned. Uh, while Laka and Dive? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Laka Dive. Strange country, Baba. Strange country. So anyway, so you were very good at diving and all that. Now let's go back to college. Uh, you had a car called 247 was the number. I remember. Am I right? Fuck, did you drop me? Good. This is good. So give all his money to beggars. He's one of those people who did that. Now I ask don't. the crew whether he paid them well. Because, I did. Yeah, you did. I did. But I, I must say, it was a very generous sort uh, when we were young. Uh, I don't know if that continued. And um, uh, there was no film thing, but you joined Mahesh Matai. And, I joined and, Mahesh but it was Mahesh Matai like do, for seven correct. months. Because I did one Cadbury ad, I remember, and you were in charge of that. Huh. But still, there was no intent to be a filmmaker. You were more in, like, you know, hustling people and things See, like that. See, I'll tell you what, my, uh, my initial thing was that I wanted to become a... Uh, a deep sea diver for oil rigs and do deep saturation dives. Which, by the way, pays very well. Be- and that was one of the reasons. Yeah. I love the water, but I mean, it was a very bizarre reason. I was a, whatever, a 16-year-old, 18-year-old. And I wanted to do that, where you live in a little chamber under, deep underwater for a good 14 days. Oh, my God. Then you come up and you couple into another chamber and you decompress for another 20 days and then you're done. But these two... <laughs> these two... Sort of uh, isolated experiences pays a shitload. Plus, you get paid for your other stuff. But it's, and, uh, uh, it's difficult on the body, right? The lungs and all that. See, that's the thing. So I met a lot of people uh, who were divers and well had finished their careers, and they were like, "We, if we got a chance, we'd never do it again." And that's when I said, "Okay, what's Plan B? Plan B was uh, during college to make money on the side. I used to get all you guys to be in, uh, like, do production for." 
Mahesh Mathai and get extras. It was all the friends. Did some ad work also in front of the camera. I do yeah, remember a couple did, of ads. Did, yeah. so you're doing everything. Just trying to hustle, yeah, hustle yeah. and get through. So this was a good. Because uh, pleasure costs money. Space uh, <laughs> to get into, so I joined Mathai. Yeah. Who's calling him Mathai? Uh, Mahesh Mathai. Sir. Mahesh ji. Sir Mahesh Mathai. The Parsi in the Bollywood uh, setup, you know, just breaks all the rules. So. You call uh, him Mahesh, by the way. You say Pankaj ji. What do you call Pankaj? Pankaj, yeah. Pankaj, okay. But I guess he's our age only. This is okay. If it's an elderly he's guy. He's younger. He's younger. Yeah. Don't tell him. He doesn't look it. No, he does. I think. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. After makeup to make him look older, huh? And um, yeah, so then I I worked in film, but literally as a gopher, I was like the guy getting the coffee and moving the video assist and that kind of stuff. Wrote one script, so it's sort of in this whole ad. But isn't film that part space. for those who don't know? Isn't that part of the deal? You get in, they make you do everything, right? You should do everything. You should do everything. I think you should do everything so you know when you ask for a coffee exactly. when you reach a certain yeah. point. And ask for a coffee. And you you didn't know get what it. Someone's <laughs> going through. He asked us for black coffee, but Amit Doshi said uh, we don't have uh, yeah. espresso. We have our own black coffee. So you were doing that, but you weren't I sure. I did that. Then what happened was my dad died very suddenly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had to suddenly up and leave this sort of advertising world, which I thought was very posh at that yeah. time, and it was quite cool. And there were like six or seven really big ad filmmakers. There was no one else. It wasn't True. like how it is now. And they were, all those r- filmmakers were rugby players. Or had some connection. Yeah, yeah, so we'd always be playing rugby, and the next thing you're modeling in an ad, the next thing you're doing an ad, you're you're working behind the scenes. So the network was very good. And uh, then when after my dad, I had to leave and run the family business, which was quite a uh, change. Change because I was suddenly uh, trying to uh, run a petrol pump in the red light area, and uh, well, you need your gas there. Yeah. So. Uh, so then that also happened for I, I a year. I know you had all these disputes I, you had to settle and all it wasn't easy. So you were all that on the head. Disputes and scraps yeah. and yeah. this and that, all that shit went on. But it was a good wake up call to see the fact that there's another reality yeah. in life which people have to actually endure and go through. After that, I was too lazy to go back and work for someone. I couldn't suddenly go back and again be the gopher for, hmm. for some reason after working for one year and being my own boss and having 40 people working under me and doing all that stuff. But I had no interest in pumping gas. So the then I started doing this bizarre, uh, I just started freelancing. Whether it was to do with films or any projects. And, As an and I, I was a, no, I was just a hustler of sorts. So you just come on the set and help? I would, no, I would be called in for a specific thing. But I mean, I'm talking about like, I remember this guy called Oliviero Toscani, who was the head of creative head of Benetton at that time, who got fired because he put uh, people who were on death row on billboards. This is years, years ago, yeah. yeah. And uh, but he was a maverick in terms of uh, so, like he wanted to shoot with uh, literally uh, people with no limbs ah. found on the roads in uh, Bombay for Benetton. As a camp- campaign, it never happened finally. It was just too too out there. I mean, it didn't make sense, <laughs> frankly. I don't know. We're not but ready. the fact is, so Olivier, we're not if there was shit no. like that going no. on, huh. like I took a, a, a fake fakir to Venice as part of La Biennale. Well, it's just as good hotels. That is a very interesting story. How the hell did you do that? And uh, I mean, where did that come from? Uh, let's just explain. So he actually, in the middle of nowhere, he's <laughs> now running bu- his own family <laughs> business, etc. Took a actual fakir. No, he was an unemployed painter from Jogeshwari. Oh, he wasn't a fakir? No. But you rest him as a fakir. Yes. So basically what happened was, uh, I remember in that Saatchi Art Gallery got a fax. I'm talking about 98, 99. Mm-hmm. A fax with a guy who was upside down with his head in the ground. Huh. Just the body sticking out. Like he had deplaned and just fallen chunk head first. Mm-hmm. And the fax said, please find above exactly what we want. So I really was confused. But it wasn't to me. It was sent to the film company has to work with. Hmm. And they said, there's only one guy who'll do this. If we know anyone who'll do this, there's one guy, you have to find, first you have to find him. Hmm. And they tracked me down and they sent me this copy of this fax and said that it's a it's a gig, you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, sure. And the next thing I was looking for a person who could actually shove their head underground with their body sticking out for hours. And <laughs> I assumed it would all be at the... Kumela or in Allahabad and in these places. Or the Bombay Times party after a few. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, we 
I actually deployed two pe- people there who used to uh, provide us with junior artists in Rishikesh, in Allahabad, and in one more place. And I literally thought there'd be a line of fakirs. Talented f- fakirs. F- fakirs. Uh. Uh, so I had asked them to send me some money at that time during uh, through uh, Western Union money transfer. <laughs> so this money came in, uh, and I sent, I think, a very small percentage so of that money to these people, and I took the rest of the money and I went to Pakistan to play a rugby tournament. Okay. And by the time I came back, I thought there'd be a whole li- long list, and these guys called me and they said it's impossible to find this guy mm. because all the real authentic guys who can do this stuff, no. I mean, they are sort of in a slightly different realm, as in, and they need. I mean, they they don't have passports. They you talking about these guys in the mountains who in can the mountains, remove yeah. their bodies, their heads from their neck, and then that kind of stuff, you know, and so, and maybe using nefarious substances to do help and all that. They're not nefarious, but I mean, we well, um, well anyway, of, but uh, I, I don't know what's right or wrong anymore. It's so confusing, man. This is true. Yeah. Uh, but regardless, I mean, uh, how do you find a guy in Jogeshwari after all this? That's the whole thing. So I and then I said, why don't you? Tell these guys that they'll be able to go to Venice. Hmm. And he said, Wo bhi try kiyar, sir. Lekin wo log bol rahe, hum log ke Venice ja sakte. Wow. So I said, I'm screwed. <laughs> this is a great travel. So I said, Europe. now I, I have. Hmm. So then I asked those guys to send me another bunch of money. Hmm. And I said, I've scoured the uh, length and uh, the north to south of the country. Now I'll have to go uh, east, east to west. To west uh, because the search for the fakir is uh, proving to be much more difficult than I had anticipated and uh, they sent it and then I actually started looking and after all that I get a call from a guy called Pappu Lekraj who was a junior artist I remember Pappu. this name and yeah. Pappu Lekraj said Omi sir, Omi sir I said, what happened? I said, who got it? I said, Le Fakiro got it He was giving the Italian one right? It's like Madeline Le Monroe Le Fakiro got yeah, yeah. it Le Fakiro <laughs> So I said, great and no mobiles at that time Yeah. I said, tell him to where will he meet me? And so I think he, he met me outside what is now the Marriott. I don't remember what it was. And uh, absolutely unassuming guy in his, with his little jhola, his two kids, his mm. sister came. Mm. And I was looking for some guy with dreads and like really expecting something quite uh, opposite to what it was. And the, there came Abdul Satar Sheikh, his mm. name was. And he used to be a busker at Juhu Beach wow. who used to bury himself under the ground with just his hands sticking out in that sort of like a samadhi kind of thing. Hmm. And people would chuck coins because it's just it's quite an impressive sight, just yeah. hands sticking out. And you can How see long this does he stay on, on the sand like that? Two hours, three what? hours. Yeah. How does he breathe? It's, uh, you you just put a cloth so the sand doesn't go in, but sand is porous, so you just need to breathe slowly. But don't try that. We're, Definitely we're, don't try it because <laughs> I tried it. You tried it? I tried it because this guy was so uh, undependable. Hmm. I said that somewhere in the middle of the gig... I, I might and, have to do it. I may have to do it. Yeah. And I also realized that this guy was an alco from hell. Oh, wow. So it <laughs> Don't was... Don't drink and bury. <laughs> so it was really like... I mean, but at that time, we never used to think about these yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah. We never we used to just do whatever... No, his job is burying his head in the sand. He should drink. No, his job was painting buildings. But that wasn't working But on out. Sundays, he used to do this. Oh, it's enterprising. Man. And... Uh, yeah, so... So I you mean, tried it uh, quickly? So you tried it, you put your head in, and how long did you last? Very realize? difficult. Very difficult. But can you breathe? Not even three minutes. Don't you feel... Claustrophobic and weight, a lot of weight. But anyway, fortunately, it did the whole thing. <laughs> and then the next thing, uh, in fact, it became a movie where Farhan Akhtar played me. Correct. Uh, I remember because they had heard the story and they wanted the rights for it. Then I don't know what happened to that, if it if, a, if it ever came out or not. But They didn't release the film? I, I read something about Farhan Akhtar replaying it and all that. I can't remember what happened to the fate of that film, but I remember I asked them for a... Nominal fee and I went to South America. To spend the money as usual. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted, it was a very exact amount. They said, how much will you pay for this story? And I remember clearly telling them, it will be X.23. And they're like, what? And I said, I need to go to Machu Picchu and come back. Wow. And that's what happened. Just tell me one thing. If you meet the mother of the fakir, do you call her a mother fakir? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it would be natural, right? Sorry, I was chewing on that for so long. Couldn't resist. Oh. I might forget Alzheimer's. Okay, so that's that story. But what you're not telling us is you actually went to Venice. I did. I went to Venice. Uh, what was the reaction to... like? Uh, I mean, they went mad. It was all over the newspapers. Le Fakiro has arrived. Uh, Le Fakiro. Le Mystique has uh, has arrived, and I had to just <laughs> explain to him that don't open your mouth because you're yeah. reeking of booze. Oh wow. 
but by then he had grown his beard he had uh, he got into he it he had the the whole he was styled yeah. for the the thing but uh, poor guy no one could really see him he was underground but uh, so they for some reason thought i was his apprentice oh so we were given a in a beautiful chalet we were given a beautiful room but with lots of sand but in, just him and practice. me sharing a double bed oh no yeah yeah and then there was he bury anything um <laughs> best left forgot leave that for part 2 yeah, yeah. but uh, no but he was uh, but you must have hit it off with him you can't survive for so long with a yeah, he chatted with the I mean, yeah it was it was fun in spite uh, of not much in common there must have been something well we missed our flight back i remember because it was my last day without him i didn't have to babysit and i went out and i uh, misjudged the time so i came back uh, a day later great story good finish double orgasm as far as i'm concerned <laughs> murder mubarak to be mentioned from time to time really? and it's all about this lovely uh, sort of scenario but but i think clubs also get a bad deal because a lot of people are anti club because it's got that elite uh, thing going for it so i think fair enough but i mean yeah fair uh, enough fair enough because fair enough. it's it's a large it's piece of you can't get in for a club i mean we have a bell <laughs> okay bell okay is call sure. a human being with a bell i have actually put that in my movie You didn't put the bell. I've put the you bell. Put the bell. The bell. Please tell people to stop using that bell. And now you're going to put in the movie. I've put in the movie, and I've. I, Everybody will do it. I've let uh, Pankaj Sripathi pick up the bell to Ooh. look at it, <laughs> and he literally looks at it, so it makes a little ting ting sound, and in one second, it's the head comes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Huh. And he looks at him, and he's not sure what that was about, so he just looks back and says, "Is this the source of it?" So he goes, "Ting ting." Yes, sir. So he says, "No, thank you." <laughs> What is that? That whole bell thing. Where it started? It, it's amazing. It's so servile it's and pathetic. wrong. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. It's unbelievable. It's pathetic. But yeah. Oh yeah. Anyway, you're throwing light on these issues now. No judgment call. You make the judgment. Murder Mubarak. We'll take a break and we'll come back and lots more to talk about the early years of Homi's career, the struggle with a beautiful film called Being Cyrus, which was the first one. After you. After me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Take the break. I'm very excited now. I'm all into joy rides. Mm, whatever that means, but I'm in Singapore, so this is the first world country of joy rides. This is real joy in the ride. I'm checking out a, a club-like atmosphere. It's like an amusement parky thingy. Let's find out. I don't know myself, but they tell me it's going to be fantastic, and I'll get to drive. And you know me, uh, Lewis Hamilton is nothing next to me. I mean, he's known, but other than that, I have better clothes, and uh, my car is smaller and. Well, I am married, and that must count for something. But anyway, let's check it out. Here it is: the joy of riding. Check this out tomorrow on Cyrus's YouTube channel, which I personally own. I am the whole hundred percent equity owner. If you want to buy ten percent, call up on this number on my hand. But watch the show. Hey, hey! It's been another great week on the IVM Podcasts Network. On all things policy, Saurabh Todi and Aditya Ramanathan dive into the geopolitics of atomic warfare as they explore the implications of India's Agni Five test. On postcards from nowhere, Utsav Mamoria dives into the fascinating world of ramen by meeting Osaki Hoshiri, a man who eats 800 bowls of ramen a year and has dedicated his life to writing about this iconic Japanese dish. Folks, if you like our shows, spread the word. Tell your friends and don't forget to rate and review them wherever you're listening to them. Follow us on social media. We are IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. You'll also find all our shows on YouTube.com/slash/IVMPodcasts. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors this week: Omedia Network India, IDFC First Bank, and ICICI Prudential Mutual Fund. Thank you for making this possible. Uh, we have to start formally the second half of yes, the sure. show. Homi Adhajania is with us. Murder Mubarak is the name of the Netflix release, March fifteenth. Please check it out. It's fantastic. He's a quality performer. Uh, but let's go back to his first film. He's told us the accent with the uh, accent rather of uh, going to Venice again. Still not ready to make films when you came back. No. So how did uh, Being Cyrus happen? And like, that's the first one, right? Oh, no, you shot uh, some ads before that. No. You didn't make I did it? nothing. I had made some home videos hmm. with a smaller camera. Whoever the girl is, show some respect. <laughs> not, try not to mention Baba, please. And uh, hmm. yeah, uh, hmm. that was it. Just home movies. So and how did this happen? Because it's like a dream. Firstly, knowing you, growing up with you, also no one thought that you'd get into films in this way, and then suddenly such quality stuff come up. You're a writer. So it was like you fooled me. And I'm not just me. A lot of people didn't know that Homi had that side to him. Homi was more like the class clown. He was like the macho man, Randy Savage. He was all the sporty guy and all. So not necessarily known uh, to have that filmy mind. Firstly, Hindi films. I don't think he saw any. I'm telling you, 
I'm Premchand next to him. Huh. But tell us. Everything you said is is, it is pretty true. accurate. Yeah. yeah. Um, no. So what happened was I was staying in Lakshadweep. I just finished my uh, I think rescue course and I was teaching there and I would keep coming back because I was uh, dating this uh, girl who you also know. Uh, I don't know if you can mention her name now, but who was in college with us? Oh boy. Uh, Anita Shroff Arjunia. Oh, you married her? Who's your fucking hell, man? I'm worried he's talking about some other girl and now he's going to be trouble. Shit, he's going to go now. Yeah, I don't. I, don't take me down with the Titanic, bro. So, it's your freaking past. Yeah. By so the way, she was living you here. You met Anita because was, of me. I, I introduced you. I know. To her. I know. Oh, they, I know. You, yeah. I, 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 or maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we, we'll have a chat about this afterwards. <laughs> I mean, uh, but sorry, are uh, you dating her and? So it was difficult sort of living there and she was sort of here and we used to live together. Uh, Before after marriage. College. Yeah, but this, is, this was but tamiz, very but, long ago. Yeah. So I think people weren't sure what the hell was going on. Yeah. I mean, now we've been educated. Yeah, fair um, Now if you don't live together, they're wondering what's going on. Yeah. Huh. So I decided to do that less and I came back and very audaciously I was writing a book and I say audaciously because... There was no publisher involved in it. But the book was fiction? Three months, yeah. I was just writing this book, yeah, story on fiction. Uh, and at that time, Kersi uh, Khambata, oh, right, right, my right. friend, came. And Captain Kersi came and just tossed this on my table. And he said, hey, have a look at this. We used to write a lot of articles for uh, travel and humor for these magazines and stuff like that. So he said, have a look at this. It's been rejected because of too much profanity. And I looked at it and I... As soon as I finished it, I just put it down. I said, Chal, I'm making this a movie. And that was it. No one, I'll tell you a no, very interesting thing. Hmm. Nobody, not Nasruddin Shah, not Dimple Kapadia, not Saif, nobody asked me if I had made a movie before. Oh, wow. They assumed, I think, that I was a, an ad filmmaker. They didn't know I was sitting in my lungi on a jetty in Lakshadweep yeah. catching fish. Which so, is one way to learn film. <laughs> so, <laughs> so actually, uh, no one ever asked me that. No, and I was very clear. That's an amazing story, bro. I you talk about three really hard uh, veterans of the of the space. They didn't even think about the background because I think they re actually they see. I was very. I'm. I'm. I'm uh, I think I'm a decent storyteller. I, I think I get very enthused and very uh, into the narration. They want the act, basically, and that's it. And they were very clear that I think from my narration, they were they got the sort of security that they said, oh shit, this guy knows exactly what he's doing. Hmm. I had no idea. <laughs> I had a story. I had no technical experience. And I actually... Well, that's not fully true. You worked on the ad films, left, right, but center. But not so in a technical space at all. Okay. It was literally, a, like I said, like a go creative for. space more. And yeah, I mean, little editing I was used to, but really not. Uh, and then a huge amount of time had passed. Yeah. I mean... 10 years since I had had that experience. Mm. Uh, things had changed. Things had gone digital and all that crap. I mean, all that stuff. So how do you on. get the money being a first time? The money maker. was interesting. The money was, uh, it's, it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's the first Times of India uh, fil uh, sponsored film. Hmm. And so therefore, we, can, we still can't find the prints. <laughs> but they were willing to invest. So obviously somebody knew you. No, we, we, they, so the, we had four producers at that time, I remember. Uh, out of which Dinesh Vijan is one who okay. still I'm with. Right. But uh, so they were, uh, Ambika and Dinesh were starting off their company and they wanted to do something different. And then there was this other company that got involved. But uh, I remember they, it was not an easy task getting the money because no one had, could unwrap their heads around, oh, an English, English language film, film exactly. with uh, Hindi film actors. Uh, plus you want to make it theatrical. It's not like a small experimental thing. And uh, so I, I, I think they were very unsure. So we went through, um, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of about eight, nine narrations and meetings with these finance guys. But then finally what happened was once we got the guy, money was on the table, everything was good to go. And I remember about 12 days before shoot being told, hey, we have to give another narration. So I said, now to who? So he said that the financiers died. Oh my God. So now we have to get a new guy. So it all became like that. You know, it was all just hustling and going on. And But it was a very easy film for me to make. Uh, and the reason was because it was my... I didn't know. So I had nothing to lose. The confidence of first I time. didn't even... Yeah. And didn't even know uh, whether I wanted to be a filmmaker after that. So... Uh, 
it was just brilliant it was there was something very liberating about that experience uh, once i got the money in the bank and once we rolled the camera for the first day i was very clear with my technician saying i don't i'm technically learning zilch yeah but i can see the whole film in my head so you guys have to translate what's in here onto celluloid and that's your job that's why i've hired the best i do the same thing with the podcast crew every morning we sit down <laughs> and then look i don't know what we're doing and they say boss i also don't know what i'm doing everybody doesn't know what they're doing and just we carry on <laughs> it's a way to run a country by the way <laughs> just don't know what you're doing but you're being a little modest all said and done uh, the film did really well it Not did only well. It, it did well but it also got uh, all kinds of critical acclaim which i think is very important for the first film Yeah. And uh, then you plunged into a uh, cocktail? Yeah, but I went then I went back to the islands. Why? Because I wanted to become an instructor. But you tasted success, people were talking about you. But you... I You know, it's it's all enjoyable and I think at that age it is more enjoyable. What did Percy uh, say? What did Anita say? What what do they what, others will be It doesn't matter what I mean the thing is that you do what you can do and then you go on to what you want to do, na. No? I mean it wasn't ever that oh I want to come back for so sort of detox. No, I just I was done. That was an experience. I want to have. So you thought you were just making one film? Yeah, and, and yeah. I wanted to know what the. I thought it was a great medium to tell a story. I love telling stories, and uh, that's where it began and ended. And then I was doing my instructor's course when Dinesh Vijayan called me up. Oh. He had by then moved and become partners with Saif at that time, and uh, they called me up and he said that we are making a, a big uh, film called Cocktail. Hmm. And uh, you're without the, Tom Cruise, yeah, without Tom Cruise, and you're the best guy to direct this. And this is and a hardcore said, Hindi film that you made. Yeah, hardcore. It and is. I, yeah, I've seen it. Absolutely. It's, it's, it holds its own with any Hindi film. Well, well, you know, being Cyrus is clearly your film. Uh, so cocktail was a very interesting experience because I remember coming in. I remember hearing the story, and uh, the story was just till the interval, and I found it uh, horribly cliched. You know, I mean, if there's a, if I mean, it's a so tempting, isn't it? <laughs> a, a love tri- triangle is a love triangle yeah, is a love yeah. triangle. So I mean, uh, for me, I said, why would I tell this story? You know, mm. but whatever it is, Dinesh had that he had a certain kind of very maverick idea in his head. He had a vision, and he said that you don't understand. And at that time, all these films, uh, rom coms, mm. were very famous. I mean, not famous, very popular. Sorry, they were very popular. Uh, you had Hum Tum and uh, all that stuff was going on. and he said this is one of those but he said the way you your lens will be so different and the way you'll treat it and i'm not i don't want you to change the story i said i because i don't like the story you know what the trick is and i'll tell you because i'm a student of cinema because you have such a western upbringing you'll always tell the story differently from most of the hindi films of the same genre so i can get this dinesh's point he's a good man he's solid and he you know but it's true you're laughing it's true because he's got his own way Otherwise, a lot of people are exactly the same because they all brought up in the same films and they have the same way of thinking. Well, he doesn't have that handicap, if I may put it out. There. No, I feel also it. It was uh, he was very like I'll tell you. What, I said no. I was. I said no to cocktail. Hmm. I said no. I can't. There's no way I'm doing this film. Hmm. I said nothing about it is appealing to me. Uh, and I remember going back, and then he gave it to another director. In fact, hmm. and about a month later, I was sitting with the. Parsis and Iruns and doing what they normally do in the evenings, wow. and uh, they turned around and said that why, with a lot of expletives and all, and said why the fuck aren't you shoot doing that cocktail with yeah. Deep- Deepika and Asate? Oh. And I said uh, because I don't know how to. And as soon as that came out of my mouth, I was so clear that I was going to do it. Uh, of course, my producer asked me to call him in the morning when I was sober. So you took the challenge on and said what the hell? No, and I realized that. I realized I was I was shying away from it because because I was scared I didn't know how to do it and I, and then that's what excites me to do things otherwise I don't That's how you did Bing Cyrus you said in a sense That's you how I uh, got into the the ring you pushed me in uh, during the Western India and Junior Nationals Oh yeah you yes. remember that Of course uh, so he was a good boxer his dad Aspia Dejania who's no no longer there was probably one of the pioneers of boxing in India was a ref was a boxer was a referee was a judge and then he was on the was ju- world jury world jury and uh, so we used to go and cheer homie on because obviously us people would take all of us and so we got to a couple of his fights there was one <laughs> fight at matunga gymkhana one you won that i went to and one you lost the matunga gymkhana guy these tamil boys were much smaller half his size half our size we all looked and like faster they just were good at boxing or whatever yeah. but i remember the drive back because us people wasn't happy 
you know and you were almost in tears and we didn't want to say anything was you know how it is yeah. he didn't win it's a long drive back from matunga man matunga to, to beach candy to beach candy i mean I in mean, those dukkar oh, fiats yeah and, I remember, and you've been beaten up be, no, beaten up by girls smaller than you and your dad so was you've been making beaten a point up, to say that don't even, yeah. yeah and yeah. what do you say yeah. yeah yeah so i mean it was yeah. you know, we grew i don't up, think you, i don't think you i don't think you edges. tried hard enough for, i think you could have been a better boxer think for some reason i wasn't interested uh, it was too much of my dad shadow which yeah. i think i just wanted to be out of and i remember mm. then that's why i got into rugby yeah and i did pretty well in rugby uh, at whatever level i was playing at but i remember him once coming to me and saying Oh the rugby guys have offered me to become the president of the rugby committee and I was like you do not <laughs> fucking even come there you don't come there wow yeah <laughs> but he was uh, gracious enough not to yeah and lots of great stories about uh, his dad I remember he used to make me sing uh when when we saw black joe not just that even yes, i remember like, uh, the thing i remember is i don't even know if that song is uh, la 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 la, la. that one that, that but of course we only see the we don't know the italian exactly so we just use one word for the whole song Absolutely. just mama just mama that's it yeah anyway let's get huh. back to before we get to murder mubarak we have a little time uh then after after cocktail you've done finding fanny after cocktail did finding you've fanny then i did angrezi medium angrezi medium which sadly really the fun. the pandemic came in the middle or something if i remember correctly the day of the release the day of the release yeah, yeah. but And that no, i mean I, I remember that. getting calls uh, saying are you okay and you know uh, frankly once i finish a film and i put it out there the f- i mean it's great when it does well and it's uh, maybe slightly disheartening when it doesn't uh, but the point is as long as i've put in everything into my uh, experience results don't matter i don't care it it genuinely doesn't bother me one way or the other i've moved on from there you know i mean uh, so i don't hang on to what the result will be it's it's not in my hands it's what we tell ugly kids the looks don't matter <laughs> just keep going bro don't worry about it no, i'm sorry to bring it up but uh, yeah don't just brother up for a second because that was a little tragic that it went off on that weekend and whatever but it still did well everybody talked about it because it, it then well, went into ott it also, or whatever yeah it did yeah. well it was taken on early on to ott i mean the the money didn't lose money. i mean the film didn't lose money it was you yeah. know agreements were made and all and it was irfan's last film i yeah. think it would have done very well in uh, theaters actually because it was this very did you know he was sick friendly. and all that while shooting fully oh that's why we did like, like you, knew, you knew how bad it was yeah yeah that's oh. why we made the film okay i mean we actually discussed this and i even told him i said that why do you want to shoot knowing your predicament though he was on uh, chemo and it was definitely uh, helping helping and he was sort of sort of on the mend kind of thing uh and he said that homie if i don't act i have nothing he said i means it's for me it's it's it's, it's a it's a spiritual experience and uh he said this is what will keep me going so i remember him calling up from i spent summer with him in london uh when he was doing his chemo between him and another friend called Cyrus who was also doing chemo oh god right, man, me, whatever you touch the guys either buried <laughs> in sand or doing chemo or diving no, and no, not no, coming no. back so, from water uh, we were uh so yeah it was quite an interesting summer but uh, i remember him then not him getting little worse and then he called me up in october if i'm not mistaken and he said i can shoot i said when he said next month i'm like we don't have a second half <laughs> so uh it was really i mean uh, the reason i jumped into that dive in uh, head first was because i realized this would be our, our last journey together we were very good friends and it, it was what he wanted and the idea was to make him laugh here for 3 months and we did that we did exactly that we had a blast we had a blast with him with uh, sutappa his wife and uh, it was just a very 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 enriching experience it also made me into a better filmmaker not because the film was great but because i realized that i've spent so much time i would spend so much time stressing about stuff that is not in my control i mean if the sun's going to set you can't stop it from setting if you're losing light you're losing light so i mean why are you stressing about things like that and i said we are making movies dude we are not sending someone to mars we are not curing cancer this guy is in front of me doing this stuff in the predicament he's in and i said so what happened was i left much lighter for it and now i put things in perspective in a sense absolutely yeah we don't take yourself that seriously and you definitely shouldn't rishi yaar every time you go to gokhale bridge don't jump yaar yeah? so wait till they fix it 
it's crazy it's a somber moment i had to spoil it really yeah, yeah. no but so interesting this arc of yours and the people you've met you know i hope you're writing your book uh then ott uh show then happened sasbo or flamingo sasbo and flamingo and now we come to murder mubarak and now murder mubarak uh, which is as we say released by the time you watch this yeah um i want to ask you what's coming next i think that, because i think your style is now you need to detox a little bit every time you do something Yeah, and also. What happens to your diving and all? Because you really I like go, that. No, I I go quite often. You do? Yeah, I don't teach anymore. Huh? But I I we we do go and choose places where we can dive or uh, travel in that sense. But uh, yeah, so I keep doing that. That this, in fact, just before I got came into your studio, I just messaged a guy who's got a little island in the Maldives. Wow, so you got rich friends. There. Working there, huh. kind of thing. In the Maldives, sort of, kinda. Should I call the government? No. <laughs> we don't do business with Maldives for me. <laughs> God, you and me will be left in the Maldives. You terrible, want that? Yeah. It's not a bad place. Not no, it's a terrible place. I don't know. What's the right thing to say? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, what, know. I don't know what the <laughs> status quo. Yeah, is right yeah, now. exactly. We'll check and get back to you. We'll get back to you. Yeah. Okay. Before we go into the AMAs, just want to quickly mention it's on Netflix. Uh, Murder Mubarak. It's Homi's fifth or sixth sixth, uh, sixth, outing. sixth outing, and it's it's funny. It is funny. You're gonna have fun with it. It's funny Plus, it's and a, dumb. Yeah, it's the perfect genre. Actually, it's my favorite. It's funny and dumb. You're thinking, and it's funny, and it's, you're thinking through the whole thing, and you're arguing with people about who's done it. That's the whole story. I don't know. I just love that kind of style. I, I yeah. I mean, I, I've seen the uh, audience. I, I think you're that kind of audience. I love that. Do you sit and from the uh, when the get go you start saying, oh, it's this one, oh, it's exactly. that one. Exactly. Do you? It, it, it irritates. So not for the cinema watching guy. It's a, it's a problem. You're not like screaming home, in the theater. Yeah, but uh, no, that's a real pain in the ass, yeah. man. But uh, but at home you do argue with people and whatever. I know I've done it, and that kind of thing. It becomes like a sport. You're you're following. So for like, me, it's so see, I I I never get. Nah, he's going to. abuse the audience no 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 i love the audience i don't like you very much but yeah bastard I, uh, <laughs> but yeah. i feel you need to watch it for the ride yeah. instead of trying to because then you you get so caught stop. up in that it's class classical you conditioning start, uh, Woman, you can be a murder mystery you said it in a club like one of our clubs you have these guys you're going to say that i know this one that one this one you're going to start presuming you start presuming you can't help it you start presuming, presuming. and i think the writers have crafted it very well where you once you're very sure that it's so and so Suddenly you're like, oh, it can't be because this one was here. Yeah. So it's that kind of stuff. Anuja is the one who wrote an ad for me called uh, "Mera Number Kab Aayega." Won lots of awards with hmm. Pepsi and stuff. Hmm. She was award-winning actress. I thought there was a Sachin Tendulkar in that ad. No, I look like him, but uh, it was someone else. Yeah, <laughs> this happens all the time, homie. Ranji Trophy two finals. I just turned up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, before I go to the AMA, uh, the question I'm gonna ask. What is the AMA? Ask me anything. Ask me anything. Come on, I'm hip, bro. <laughs> uh no uh, casting couch have you used it i don't think that i, I mean it's i gone. don't want to be uh, bad news I don't, bearer i don't think that exists at least not in the world i have been part of uh what i heard is that, I work, that even the senior actors just call them by their first name yes i do and that's lovely i just want to be there all the time because they're so used to all these psycho fans but they're totally cool with that yeah I what mean, are they going to do hey ome it's g <laughs> has anyone ever told you no Not one. In fact, when 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 just recently, uh, I think Sarah was saying "homi sir, homi sir," and I yeah, said I haven't God. been, I haven't been knighted yet. Yeah, yeah homi just... sir, homi uncle. God, jeez, man. There's no reason to throw uncle in. Unnecessary. Yeah. <laughs> okay, homi, come on, pay attention now because these are your fans. We had lots of questions. We brought it down to four or five, so we, you know, it stays in the time. Yeah. Uh, since uh, oh, AMA for homi. Since when do you know Cyrus Brocha? Was there any thought, temptation to cast him in being Cyrus once when you were drunk at the at the BG? You said something about the producer. I've known you since uh, first standard seven. We first seven. standard. Wadi yeah. Baba, you can Google it. Cyrus, <laughs> homie, first standard. Was it first standard? Yeah. First standard. You were transition. I I wasn't in trans. I was in Shellims. Oh. Where, where they made me stand on a chair and beat me. Hmm. That was part of school. That was all part of school. I miss that part of school now. Yeah. It's so easy for the kids. Yeah. So the question is, how long you know? Yeah. So we've known each other pretty uh, much all our lives. He turned fifty-two in February. He, if he lies about his age, Shanaz Malaika, I can't call out, but I can call out the boys. Um. Yeah. So forty-five years. And like I said, it's uh, early years, quite close. I had a lot of memories, family, beach candy, all that. And then uh, Xavier's two years. I uh, we got a little close again. And then of course you were my uh, guide in college. Yeah. You introduced me to everyone. Yeah. And then when Not I that realized that to. there was a better bunch of people to hang yeah. out with, that's yeah. when I dropped you. Yeah, I think you did drop me and got the seniors. Yeah, then you went to the SY yeah, girls yeah, yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah, Fair yeah. enough. Nice. I went to the lower kids. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I could bully them a little bit still, <laughs> and yeah, that's how we are, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a long time. 
Yeah, but if anyone who knows Homi, like outside the film world and all, is he's man for a good time, and I I don't mean this in a bad way. Uh, I'm, I'm how's that a bad thing? No, I know a lot of people say hey, party too much and all that. So no, I'm, no, no. I've totally stopped. Really? Yeah, I've totally. Hormones. I think my wife is fed up because I, I genuinely I'm done. I'm done partying. I'm uh, the social gene doesn't go. No? But I'm not you're social. shooting films and all that. Uh, so I, I'm. What do you mean you're not social? You're at parties every night. Means in which world? This is what happened to me when I was in college. When black well. money was available. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Harvest pa Parsi boy says hello homie. If you like, if you have to write a script, keeping side. This is the one you selected. Keeping Cyrus in mind as a lead. What would it be like? Take your time. <clears throat> what would it be pa. like? What would the sh- movie be like or whatever? Uh, if you had to cast me as a lead, what film? Like, what would be the thing? Oh, what would God, you cost? What a depressing thought. I know, yeah. but listen. If if supposing you're forced to do this, say by a government or something. Oh. <laughs> Let's say Putin. You're Russia. So when I'm leaving, you're, I'm not going to get a message saying please cast me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you might. Huh. I think you would do well in a wrestling film. Yes. W- woman wrestling film. With that, uh, like that Jack Black. Jack Black. No, but I change gender. Yeah, win. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you're you're quite a this thing, and so you're into that whole burn the bra movement. Ah, and you I burned it long ago. And you jumped in. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can my see. wife and me are both free. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, I think that would be a good one for you. Uh, and you could sort of win at the end and okay, sing uh, now, old black Joe. I'll do all that, but uh, going back to what year was being Cyrus before you 2000 shot? Two thousand and no, that's released. When did you shoot? Three. You shot in two thousand three. Possibly. So say two thousand two when the, when it was all coming together, but wasn't together. Yeah. Once we were drinking at the bar at yeah. the BG when we were allowed to drink, and you said, "I've got a role, a small role for you in this thing. Will you do it and all that?" But you right. were drunk and being very loving, as we are when we're drunk. You never <laughs> called me after that, <laughs> ever again. Yeah, <laughs> just saying. Was that's, it Gardner? Gardner role? So I, 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 have, I have a memory. Very shocking. I have a memory, but not very clear. No, no, you did. I swear, my mother, you said this, and then you, uh, whatever. I mean, I'm going to call you and say, bro, do you remember? I'm sure, like you said, every Bombay Gym member by then yeah, I yeah, heard yeah. about the film. And but do you think now, now I'm just thinking back, is it because I tell them all that I'm going to cast them? I'm wondering. And then they slap me at the reception you and say, made, You made an English film in, I think, Panchgani or something. Everything was working out well for people well, from South Bombay. Everything, Bombay. yeah. Everything. You know, I mean, made, I mean, they'd pay to be in your film. You should have thought of it that way. You could have charged people and just cast and made them. money, yeah. Oh, man, what a story. Okay. Uh, last one. Your experience working with Irfan Khan, you've told us that already. Joy, uh, joy. Billy was unwell, uh, the final completion of the film. Also, between being Cyrus and Cocktail, let's look at that one. Six years is a long gap. So, what was your scene at that time? You said you just didn't, you took off. See, I'll tell you what. I, in fact, recently said this in an interview. I, I Making films is just a small part of my life. Very nice. I mean, I have the rest of my life to live. I mean, that's a full-time job itself. You know, I love doing adventure sports. I uh, babysit. I, I do all my stuff. I mean, and I just, I'm not interested in getting obsessed with one, one thing. One-dimensional. Yeah. So yeah. for me, I used to make films whenever I want to make films. But saying that because of the experience I told you with Irfan and everything and how I just sort of felt much lighter and realized... Uh, Especially after the Saas Bahu serial, Saas Bahu Flamingo, three months in uh, the salt flats and the deserts. And and we had such a great time doing that. And I realized that it's not that difficult and it's actually great fun. And I enjoy it. And I want, I'm someone who actually wants to start working when everyone retires. Fair enough. That's my plan. You, That's my retirement plan, to start working. It's called the artistic temperament. You know, do whatever you want. Like, I want to stop this fucking podcast now. I've just had enough. Did what do I? you say? I think so. Oh, no, no. Bro, but just say uh, the film again, na? Murder Mubarak. Ah. Keep her happy. Yeah, so uh, 15 March. on 15th March, we're dropping Murder Mubarak. Watch it and enjoy. Yeah. And now put your legs together. Cause you're on what? Be a lady. On what? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. Take it again. Take it again? One minute. I'll just... Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> on 15th? <sighs> After this, yeah. a little bit. I don't... The squeezing happens. Watch Murder Mubarak on March 15th on Netflix. Ta-dum. Ta-dum.